Mohamed Morsi sailed into the presidency of Egypt with the winds of a people's revolution demanding change. In 2012, he became Egypt's first democratically elected president and the first civilian to hold office. Morsi was born in 1951. He spent his adult life first as an engineering professor, then as a member of parliament and a political prisoner. The Egyptian revolution in 2011 set the stage for Morsi to reach the pinnacle of power. A year after Egyptians overthrew longtime dictator Hosni Mubarak, Morsi took the oath of office to replace him. From the start, secular Egyptians were suspicious that Morsi's real allegiance would continue to be with the Muslim Brotherhood. Morsi promised to be a president for all Egyptians. Instead, critics say he tried to consolidate his power by giving himself authority above the judiciary and dominating the government with Muslim Brotherhood members. Morsi's opposition refused to be silenced. In June 2013, in scenes reminiscent of the revolution, millions of Egyptians filled Tahrir Square, calling for their president to step down. Morsi refused and offered a national reconciliation. Days later, the army deposed him, ending Egypt's historic but brief experiment with democracy. Stripped of the title of president, Morsi swiftly became a political prisoner once again. He was ultimately tried and sentenced to death for allegedly working with foreign armed groups and plotting a mass jailbreak when guards were killed. To the end, Morsi was defiant, rejecting the court's authority and insisting he was the legitimate president of Egypt, elected by the people. A 55-year-old Joseph Allen was vacationing in the Dominican Republic when on Wednesday night he told his friends he was going back to his hotel room because he felt feverish. He took a cold shower. The next day he was found dead in his hotel room. That was last Thursday. This happened at the Terra Linda Resort in Sosua, Dominican Republic. Joseph's brother Jason said in a statement that his brother had just had a physical and was in, quote, very good shape no issues. Quote, my family and I are afraid that my brother was a victim of a wrongful death. It is our wish to have my brother's body taken from the Dominican Republic to be autopsied by a forensic pathologist here in the United States. There have been nine mysterious deaths on the island since last year. The Dominican Republic listed the cause of death for most of those cases as heart attacks or pulmonary edema, lungs, um, lungs filled up with fluid. But the families of most of the tourists say that they were healthy and exhibited no signs of illnesses before they went on vacation. We know at least three had alcohol from mini bars. We don't know if the other six did. We shot down over eastern Ukraine five years ago, all 298 people on board Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 killed when the flight from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur was hit by a missile. Investigators have blamed Russian-backed separatists who they say targeted the plane with a Russian-made missile. And the four persons Igor are Girkin. Igor Girkin, Sergei Dubinsky, Sergei Dubinsky, Oleg Pulatov, Oleg Pulatov and Leonid Karchenko. And Leonid Karchenko. The Gherkin, Dubinsky, and Suspects Gherkin, Dubinsky and Pulatov have the Russian nationality and our information points to the fact that they currently reside in Russia. Suspect Karchenko has the Ukrainian nationality and we assume that he resides in eastern Ukraine. And this is an area that is currently not under supervision of the central authorities in Kiev. You remember during one of the debates when crooked Hillary said, if I win, are you going to support me? But I must be honest, I didn't give her a great answer. That was a very, that might have been my hardest question during the debates. 
Isn't it amazing that it worked the other way around, right? Isn't it amazing? If you want to know how the system is rigged, just compare how they came after us for three years with everything they have versus the free pass they gave to Hillary and her aides after they set up an illegal server, destroyed evidence, deleted and acid washed 33,000 emails, exposed classified information, and turned the State Department into a pay for play cash machine. In the Middle East, tensions ramping up between the U.S. and Iran tonight. U.S. military officials say that Iran attempted to shoot down an American drone that was watching the attack on the tankers in the Gulf of Oman. The Trump administration says they do not want war, but they will take any action that is necessary to secure those vital shipping lanes. Here's ABC's Julia McFarlane. Tonight, as the fallout over hostilities in the Gulf continues, U.S. Central Command now revealing the Iranians attempted to shoot down an American drone, monitoring one of the tankers on fire. The MQ-9, similar to this one, was allegedly targeted by an Iranian surface-to-air missile, missing it by less than a mile. This comes as the Trump administration tries to build an international consensus behind this video, which the Pentagon says shows Iranian Revolutionary Guard Patrol removing an unexploded mine from one of the tanker's hulls. Today, Secretary Mike Pompeo unequivocal. This was taken from an American camera. This is the stuff. This is the real data. Yes, we've shared it with allies already. The world needs to unite against this threat from the Islamic Republic of Iran. A surprise discovery about the home of the Enlightenment. France now leads the world in anti-vaccine sentiment. According to the biggest ever survey on public attitudes toward health and science, 33 percent of French people do not agree that immunization is safe. British medical charity Welcome teamed up with Gallup World Poll to survey more than 140,000 people across 144 countries. And this study also found that France has among the highest levels of distrust of government. Experts say this is correlated with skepticism over vaccines. Until the turn of this century, around 90 percent of French people were pro-vaccine. But a series of scandals involving drug companies shook public confidence. And during the 2009 swine flu epidemic, the French government ordered huge quantities of vaccine, but less than 10 percent of people took up the offer. There are people today who are more afraid of the vaccinations than of the disease because they're no longer exposed to it. They don't remember it. They've never caught it thanks to vaccines. All the infectious diseases will return if we stop vaccinating. And this evening, we're going to focus on what figures to be the president's signature issue in that address and probably the campaign, immigration and border security. We're seeing Air Force One, obviously, right now. Uh, William Lajeunesse is on the border between Mexico and Guatemala with what is happening on this issue there right now. With roadblocks and checkpoints, Mexican National Guard and immigration agents are stopping vehicles, hunting for illegal immigrants. Troops are also staging along the Guatemala border, hoping to thin those already in the pipeline to the U.S. We are working with the U.S. We are working with Central American countries, and the objective is to stop human trafficking. Mexico's policy today is like night and day compared to just seven months ago, when it offered humanitarian visas, work permits, and health care. Police filled buses and trucks with immigrants headed to the U.S. Today, they take them off.